Okay, welcome back everyone. In this video, we shall finally explore Simulink in its all glory. And uh, in order to launch Simulink, you'll first have to launch MATLAB like I have it right here. Okay, so um, the Simulink should be in this um, top right corner for most of you guys. So just click on Simulink and we shall launch it. All right, here we have the uh, Simulink start page. Now, for the uh, majority of this course, you will only be concerned with creating blank models. You don't have to worry about all everything else that is here. Blank models should suffice. Okay, so... And here we are in its uh, actual window where we're going to be doing most of the uh, Simulink action. This is where all your dreams are going to come true. In order to... Um, first we need to look at the equation that we're trying to model. We have the first order... We have the simple first order model. dy dt is equal to 1 over tau multiplied by the uh, parentheses the gain multiplied by x minus y so um, x is my input y shall be the output of my equation i have the uh, values of my constants right here and i've also been given the initial conditions and we're assuming the system was initially at steady state hence these over bars okay so in the library, once you click on the library, you'll be greeted with all this good stuff. You won't need most of this. You won't need most of this unless you're taking a signals processing class. For the most part, we're, we're going to be concerned with sources, sinks, and the uh, continuous blocks. Once again, uh, sources, sinks, continuous, and math operations. Sources, sinks continuous math operations that's where most of the things that you would need shall reside for this course again you can go to MathWorks website and explore the rest of these blocks so I'm gonna start off by uh, placing my input so most of my inputs shall be represented by a step block so in order to put my step block into the actual window I'm just gonna click on it hold it drag all right give it a second let's be patient and there it is all right so let me just zoom it out for you guys there you go you can play around with it you can click on it hold it move it around fun stuff i'm gonna label this as x of t x function of time okay and if you double click on this it will give you the step time now the step time is the uh, value of time where, where the uh, it's gonna go from its initial value to the final value right now we're just gonna stay at steady state so our initial value was 2 and our final value shall stay 2 and if the initial and final value are the same the step time does not matter okay here we go next step let's see our input is being multiplied by a gain term so we're gonna need a gain term and uh, that's gonna be found in the math operations this right here now okay these are perfectly aligned and as you can see it already is um it already is trying to predict what you're trying to do so you just if you click on this right here it's gonna snap it it's gonna snap the uh, arrow the x of t to the gain and this shall be equal to oops not that and this shall be equal to three the value of gain that i'm using is three okay all right so the signal that is coming out of this gain is just going to be k star x of t okay um okay very good now we're subtracting now there's a subtraction operation in order to do addition or subtraction operations we're going to go back into the library and in the math operations you have this add block the add block right here and uh, let's see if there's an other similar block but mm, for now we're just going to make do with the add block now the add block 
I'll show you. In our image, we have subtraction right here, okay? But here, both of our operations are addition operations. If you double click on this, you can go and hmm, change this to plus minus instead of plus plus now. Now it's gonna have a subtraction operation. All right, um, now the, sub the other value that is being subtracted is y of t, right? But y of t is actually our output variable, which we don't have right now. So how are we gonna, how are we gonna deal with this? That comes later, be patient, okay? I promise you guys, it's all gonna make sense. All right, so this signal right here is gonna be, whoops, not that, this signal is equal to kx of t, minus y of t all right that's the uh, meaning behind the signal what is make sure you're keeping track of the meaning of each signal the meaning is important now we have another we have a division okay we're dividing by tau so let's go back to our library in the math operations oh there we have our, our divide block all right and it snaps in here uh, we're divide the term that we're dividing by it's is a constant is a constant so we're just gonna use the constant block and that shall give us the value of our time constant here is five seconds and there we go uh, don't worry about the sum sample time or any of these details for now okay okay so now this term right here the signal that is coming out is basically equal to everything that is on the left hand side everything that is on the left hand side and everything that is on the left hand side is equal to the derivative term so this right here if i label this this shall be my dy dt term and in order to go from dy dt to y i need to integrate so if i just go back to my library right here i'm gonna have one over s as my integrator block and this signal that's going to come out is going to be y of t. And also since uh, we're doing integration, there's going to be, in order to get rid of the constant of integration, we're going to need a initial condition. So our initial condition, as we've been given here, is 6. Okay. And now, all right, now, now we have a y dangling here. We have a y dangling here. Ah, uh, see, it already knows what we're trying to do. Our system has been looped back. Our system has been looped back. I call it looping. I'm not sure what's the technical term for it, but uh, as long as it makes intuitive sense, as long as it makes intuitive sense, we're good. So now, okay. Now if we, we are all set to run this simulation, but I also need to visualize what's happening to my y of t and my x of t, right? So for that, I'm gonna add the in the sinks column there's going to be this scope so i'm going to add a scope and my scope is going to have the my scope is going to be connected to both the y and the x give me a second uh, oops all right you yeah, hang on there we go all right just play around it with a bit get a get some feel for it get in the uh, get some intuition for it and Hopefully this all is going to make sense very soon. Very soon you're going to be masters of Simulink, I promise you guys. All right, it's running, compiling. All right. Let's see what is happening. As you can see, the uh, Y value stays steady at 6. And the X value, the input, stays steady at 2. The system has not been disturbed it is at steady state now we're gonna see what happens as we disturb the system <laughs> okay okay sorry sorry about that so let's say we step it up from two to four at a time interval of one okay and uh, instead of running it for 10 time units i'm gonna run it for 30 time units just to see what happens okay so i hope you can see this step response in the x and there is this first order response in the y value as you can see it's going it's approaching the steady state value of 12 this is an x 
this is a uh, I believe it's called the one minus exponential response the first order response so it's uh, starting at 6 and approaching 12 as time goes to infinity now let's see what happens if we play around with the gain of the system let's say we increase the gain to 5 and uh, I'm gonna step it up at 0 okay let's see what happens all right so now the uh, obviously before I, I believe it was going up till 12 now it's going up till 20 now the system is behaving more aggressively of course and if you keep increasing the value of gain your system is going to become more and more aggressive as you can see here now it's going up till 40 now let's see what happens as I keep decreasing the time constant 2.5 all right, it's reaching its steady state faster now, slightly faster. Um, let's see, at 1.25. Okay, the graph, as you can see, it reaches its steady state value at a much faster rate. Okay, so now we have played around with the gain and the time constant of our first order model. All right, very good. Now at the top, at the, sorry, bottom, right corner if you click here you can play around with the solver settings this is where you're gonna be this is where all the ODE solvers can be found right now it is uh, on automatic and that's gonna work for most of the problems unless there will be some really weird problems which are gonna have some uh, which which are gonna need some special treatment so just to give you a walkthrough in variable step you have the following options dormant prints um, atoms the uh, ODE 15 S 23 S for stiff and like for stiff differential equations etc. Go to MathWorks.com to get more details. You have the fixed step solvers, Runga Kada, Euler etc. Backward Euler, Dormant Prince. And then if you click on solver details, you can um, select the step size and you can even I believe select the uh, relative tolerance. So play around with all of this don't play around too much uh, make sure what you're doing go to mathworks website okay and uh, yeah that was uh, that was our first order model we started off with a step response we used the gain block we used simple mathematical operations like the addition and the division block we used um we studied the significance of integration the integrator block takes in the derivative and spits out the variable and then we use the scope to visualize what's happening to our input as our input is disturbed what happens to our output all right so yeah thank you guys for watching and i hope this was helpful